As to five, here you see how frail and weak we are, but how God works through frail and weak people. Esther, the Jewess, the secret Jewess who has not told her husband, the king, that she is a Jewess, she decides that, okay, I will go and see the king and the wicked Haman and beg the king to not do what Haman's saying. So she invites the king and Haman to her place for a banquet, and they come. And, uh, well, she plies them with wine, and then the king says, So, Esther, what do you want? Well, we know what she wanted to say. It was like, well, can you reverse this wicked decree that Haman's made, this guy here? But she gets stage fright. She bottles up. She can't say it. And the king says, well, dear, what, what do you want? I come to your party because you wanted, obviously asked me something. What do you want? Um, um, can, you, can you come tomorrow uh, to, to, to another uh, a banquet that I'll put on for you tomorrow? Ah, oh, yeah, right. That night, the king couldn't sleep. And he looks through his journals and he sees, Oh, Mordecai the Jew saved me from death. And I never rewarded him. I think I'll reward him. And likewise, if Haman had known ahead of time who Esther was and what she was planning to do, he probably would have somehow gotten out of the situation. That delay of one day was so critical for the story and for the way God chose to save. But it all began with this very human young woman, probably still a teenager, all bottled up. When it comes to the big moment, she flunks it. Absolutely beautiful how God works. And when she says, let the king come with Haman, if you take the first letter of each of those words, it spells Y-H-W-H, Yahweh. The name of God is never met in the book of Esther, not God nor Yahweh. But sometimes you can see that it's worked into the text. Like in that little phrase when she says, let the king come with Haman. Yes, Y-H-W-H, if you take the first letter of each of those words. God is not afar off. God might appear to be absent from the whole scene of our lives. He may not visibly be there, but he is there. That's the point. Man is not alone. Yahweh is there, interwoven, right through all our weakness, our stage fright and our weakness. He's there, working for us and through us.